<clears throat> hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome. Uh, let me throw some pretzel up and get this going here. I hope everyone's having a good morning so far. Um, if you're watching later, thanks for tuning in and checking out part three of Making a Superhero. Um, I've grown really fond of Carve, so we're going to keep working on Carve today, and um, we'll see how it goes. And um, I know it's a little early, and I, this was supposed to be done on Friday, but um, true story, I got my COVID uh, second injection on Friday, and uh, it wiped me out. I, the first one didn't wipe me out at all, but this one really wiped me out, so um, it sucked. <laughs> uh, that's the only way to say it, is it sucked. It was terrible. It was a terrible feeling. All right, I'm going to throw a pretzel up here and uh, throw some music on while we're drawing. Nothing too crazy. Um Let's see here. All right. So we're going to work on part three of Superhero Carve. Carve is our intergalactic half cat, half monkey type thing. And uh, it's pretty exciting. I think I think he's one of my favorite characters here. Let me turn this down a bit. There we go. Um, yeah, he's pretty cool. And I'm looking forward to drawing the rest of them. I think if we get enough done today, what we're going to do is we're going to jump into Photoshop and color them. That's the uh, that's the goal today, is uh, to jump in there and color them after. So uh, I hope that I hope we can do it. I just realized we haven't even inked them yet. All of these uh, dark lines are. Or just him with pencils, rough pencils at that. I, I, we didn't even get to the color yet, to the inking. Uh, so we'll have to ink them up, I think. Um, I hate to, I hate to discount anything. So we're, we're probably gonna have to cut, uh, ink them up. But I'm here for a while. What time is it? We got, we have at least three hours. We're gonna be here for at least three hours. You know, uh, hopefully, if we can get a strong enough group. And by strong with my my group of people, I mean you know six or seven of us, so we can talk comics and uh, Mortal Kombat and other things. I hope you've all seen your Mortal Kombat and you're not getting spoiled by by the internet. You no secrets are getting out. <laughs> um, this has been really fun doing these superheroes, so I'm gonna keep doing them for a while. I think they. Uh, I think they're resonating with people and that's kind of cool um we are going to go back to the paladin and the uh the other characters because um they're starting to look really cool and uh the paladin's almost being finished coloring what i'm going to do is uh lisa's still a little too shy to to twitch stream so she's coloring it up but filming it and I'm going to edit it. I'm going to put a voiceover on it. We're going to drop it in here so you can watch her coloring process, um, which is really cool. You get to see how some of the color is done, uh, which I like. And um, maybe if the responses are positive enough, we can get uh, we can get um, we can get Lisa to break her camera shyness and do some do some streaming. Because I really think I think it would help everybody. I think her color techniques and style are cool. And uh, it could help people just breaking in, and um, and it'll help her confidence. So that'd be great all the way around, right? All right. So here we are, Saturday morning. Uh, it's my son's birthday coming up uh, on the 27th. So I won't be streaming on the 27th. Probably not. We're gonna make our way out to the zoo for the day, uh, masks and all. But since my wife and I are now. Uh, uh, vaccinated with the part two of the COVID, there's no reason not to go out. So we're gonna we're gonna go out and enjoy the day with him. Uh, see some of the he loves animals and and uh, aquariums. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna hit the uh, hit the zoo. See if we can feed some of the parrots and uh, visit the seals. He loves going up to the little aquarium area there. So it should be a fun day. All right, so we're working on a superhero. Hi, Tady. Good morning. I hope you're doing well. 
Um, oh yeah, so the t-shirts that were supposed to go out on Friday, obviously they didn't go out because of the COVID. Um, I was just wrecked with the uh, the vaccination uh, after effects. So um, all that stuff is going out uh, Monday morning. So we'll get that all out there. Um, oh, today, it's going out today, <laughs> later on. I thought today was Sunday for some reason. So it's going out today and we'll get those t-shirts out to the winners. Um, for the address, we've got Corey, we got, we got M's, we got, uh, we got, um, who else? We got Mel and, um, a couple of others. So, and then I'll announce my Instagram winners today too. I'll post a little thing up for them so you can see that. All right, let's get started on this guy. Um, I think we are going to ink him. So let's get started on inking this guy. I've got two ink. I've got two tools here that I use that I've customized. Um, just so you can see them right here in the middle. Uh, let me see if I can. I can't blow up the thing here, but you can see my two inks here. One is a broader pen for doing outlines and heavy flares, and one is a detailed pen that I've customized uh, so that I can get in close and do stuff. So we're going to start with this one first. Um, it's going to be a little bit thinner. Yep, there we go this up here make sure it's a true black I don't I don't pencil in a true black I uh, I do my pencil lines a little bit le like about 80% black just to give it that pencil feel so um, whenever I'm inking I just add a little bit more uh, to the opacity I think it I think it helps I'm gonna bring it down one uh, something happened here I uh, oh no we're good okay the default setting for sketchbook pro is 100 dpi so what it'll do sometimes is it will resize the picture to uh, 100 dpi and then larger overall page size so if it's if a, not a winner Oh, you're always a winner. Don't say that. Why, do you want a t-shirt, Tady? Do you want a t-shirt? Because uh, that can be arranged. Um, DM me your uh, your address, Tady. All the great things you do for everybody. I would love to do something back for you. So DM me your address, and we'll send you one of the baking soda volcano t-shirts. How's that? Um, you deserve some nice things, too. All right, so we're going to send out an extra t-shirt. Uh, yeah, these, <laughs> these are some big eyebrows, aren't they? <laughs> um, I've been working on a color scheme for this guy. And uh, I might do a tribute to Tigra. If everyone knows who Tigra is. Um, Tiger is a Marvel character. She's amazing. One of my favorite. I think she's underutilized in the world of savage, furry, cool female warriors. Um, I know that sounds funny, but there's plenty of them in the comic book universe. Um, so maybe we'll do a tribute to her with a with a black and a black and orange or a dark gray and orange. This. See, this is why you are an amazing person, Tady. This is why. Well, we have another, we have another draw coming up soon, and it's going to be for a free, uh, commissioned art piece. Um, so we're going to announce that soon. Um, there's going to be two winners, one here and one on, one on Instagram, and uh, maybe you'll win that. And the, the free commission piece, when we announce it, will be officially, when we put up a poster for it, um, will be for anything anybody likes. So if it's X-Files, Doctor Who, My Little Pony, Fortnite, it doesn't matter. Um, the winner will get a, we're going to make a video of it, of me drawing it, and we're going to chop it up 
uh, and edit it, put some music to it, and then we're gonna hand it out to somebody. So it's gonna be a really cool giveaway. All right. Oh, we always could do commission nipple rings. Yes, yes. Always one step ahead of me with your replies. I like it. I've never done a commission for nipple rings. And I've done some really, really weird things for commissions. I had one gentleman, every year he'd come back and ask me to draw characters with milk on them. And, uh, uh-oh. You know what we did wrong here? We, um, we got to start all over. Can anybody tell me why? Oh, no, we're good. Okay. Whew. <laughs> I thought I, uh, I thought that I had started inking on a pencil page. But we're good. We're good. All right, so you can see how thin these inks are when I, when I do this part, right? So, pretty, pretty thin, um, compared, compared to my fat nib. Look how fat my nib is here not a euphemism um, so there we go so you can see the difference and this one you see that you see when I pulled that that really nice pull the fat nib gives you really good pulls like that so I like it all right let's go back to this Uh, all right, so I'm gonna do this weird giant nose. I toyed with redoing this nose. At first, I thought it was too big, so I was like, eh, I don't know. But now I'm I'm fine with it. I it's grown on me. I think it just creates more questions about what is he? Is he a cat? Is he a monkey? No one knows, <laughs> right? So, um, I think I'm going to keep it. Well, for sure I'm keeping it, ranking it. Um, oh, gosh. I just, my son just got this most amazing skin in Fortnite. Oh, so good. Um, I don't know if anybody else has seen it, but it's this bubble guy. But when you, when you get kills with him, He, um, the kills, um, it's pretty cool. When you get kills with him, little skulls grow all over, all over his costume for each kill you get. So my son is just thrilled to have that. <laughs> uh, I got it for him for his birthday. Oop, let's go back to this one. And, uh, he was just thrilled. I I'm kind of jealous. I mean, I like my John Wick skin, but. That one's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, the black inky guy. He is so cool. Every time you get a kill with him, a new skull will grow on your costume. So you can fill them all the way up by the time you're done a battle. And Griffin has just been dub city lately, man. He has been uh, dub after dub. He has been killing it. Sorry, I'm just going in a little bit of detail here, so I got a little quiet. <laughs> I tend to do that when I'm focusing on problem areas. Yeah, that 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 whatever he is, he's really cool. I really I really enjoyed seeing him on the um, on the Fortnite store. That was I like what they're doing this season after having so many so many licenses. All right. So we're gonna work on this. I can never tell if this is a commercial or a real song. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. 
I mean, there has to be a real song, right? Nope. You know, I don't listen to dubstep any other time except for when I'm drawing. I'm usually a, a super heavy metal guy. Um, or a hard rock. Uh, this stuff grows on you. Especially when you're drawing, it keeps you energized. So, you know, there it is. <laughs> it's a dubstep tutorial. It totally is, right? It's hilarious. Let's check. Is this real or are they messing with us? It's a real tutorial by DJ Nate. All right. Thanks, DJ Nate. So long. You were awesome. All right. Let's keep going here. So when I'm doing hair, I don't like to do like random blind pieces that start out of nowhere. A lot of times I like them to connect to something and then, then break apart. You know, I can sort of dictate where light, when I'm working with certain colors, like when I'm working with uh, Rochelle Atkinson, uh, she knows when she sees those dots, that's where my light starts to break in or my highlights. And it's great to have that... Uh, it's great to have that um, communication knowledge with my inker or my colorist. I actually don't like inking my own stuff. I would prefer to have an inker do it all the time. I just haven't found an inker uh, until Mustafa that I could trust every day on my stuff. Now Mustafa and I are quickly becoming a Batman Robin duo and I'm really enjoying our team ups because his artistic talents are phenomenal. And I like that, what he's bringing and adding to the pictures. Um, you should always have an inker who brings something, not just copies your lines. I think I think the best inkers bring a little bit of flair. I, I had two good inkers, Craig Young and Norman Lee. Both of them added something different uh, to the image. And of course, I've told this story before, but Craig and I started together. That's right, an unspoken understanding. Yes, exactly. Um, so important. And uh, it's different each time. Like, my stuff with Norman doesn't look the same with Craig. And my stuff with Mustafa doesn't look the same as either of those gentlemen. Uh, rest in peace, Norman. I miss you so much, bro. Um, but... Uh, that's the cool part about having different uh, inking partners on your projects is being able to maintain some of your own uh, style, but seeing something different. Oh, there you are. Ah, I just missed them. So we have these little things called the ankle biters right now in uh, California. They're, they're not indigenous. They're these mosquitoes that came from Africa, and uh, they're really tiny. Uh, they call them ankle biters for a reason because they bite right around your ankle a lot. I don't know why they like it down there, but they do. And there's one on my screen. I know he wants to eat me, but every time I see him, I'm tempted to stop inking and just kill him. Um, I'm sorry to any of you mosquito pro-lifers, but he's gotta go. You never know. There could be a mosquito pro-lifer. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm just saying. All right. So we are... We're just getting his hair. Um, I know some people really enjoy the inking process. For some reason, they find it satisfying just watching the... It's kind of like watching people bake cakes or uh, cut the grass or sandblast. 
on TikTok, they just like the uh, the inking and how smooth it goes compared to penciling, which is kind of cool. I've had people tell me, I, I mostly tune in for your inking. Those are my favorite. I like watching your repeats of your inking. I do eat both, uh, so they probably do think I'm delicious. They've snacked a lot. I get so mad at them. Wish they'd stop it. Um, I wasn't happy with the way the hair split here when I drew it, so I'm just gonna I'm just altering it a little bit here. Hey, it's not a stream unless I allergy cough, right? Oh my gosh. Every... <clears throat> you come for the chatter. I'm afraid it might be pretty quiet today on a Monday morning at uh, 6.20. I don't know. Um, it's just me and you. It's a very intimate chatter. So if there's anything you want to talk about, I'm for it. I'm all for it. Um, I think my son's school starts at, at nine. So we're good for three hours. It could be just Tatey and Logan talking for three hours. Man, if that doesn't bore you, Tatey, I don't know. I hope not. I hope, I hope you're okay with that. And that's not me telling you have to stay for three hours, Tatey. <laughs> I would be drunk. I don't drink, so uh, I think it would take two shots. I used to be a. I used to be a heavyweight. I am not a heavyweight anymore. Just not for me. Yeah, not for me. Um, I spin my page around a lot. Some people don't when they're doing digital. I don't mind. I, I, I think it helps me um, get to the lines better for myself. I think it helps. Hey, good morning, hippo. Or is this good night? Actually, you just getting you just coming in from a shift. You getting ready for bed, dude? Hippo, one of my best online buds. One day we will meet up and have some brews. Uh, yeah, chocolate shots, I'm down for that. I'm down for that. I mean, I, I'm a lightweight now. I used to go pretty hard at it after football games, especially road games. Uh, when you're on the road, we, you know, if you have a big win, we used to celebrate. Um, and of course, when I was doing my thing before that, uh, we're all hard drinkers up there so um but every since i since i stopped playing football i haven't really had anything to drink so it's not a big deal anymore don't miss it i think that's the thing i don't miss it too busy with my boy and chilling and oh just got away from me there. Uh, I gave up soda on January 1st. I still crank open a root beer, so. But I stopped drinking like Pepsi and Coke on January 1st. Uh, because on January 1st, I weighed myself and I weighed almost 240 pounds. And I was like, okay, enough's enough. We're going to get back in there and stop being 240 pounds. Um, so I weighed myself and said that was enough. So, uh, And Coca-Cola and Pepsi were a major factor behind that. So I stopped drinking them. Uh, yesterday, I measured my, weighed myself. I'm down to 208. Uh, so it's, it's, it's going as I had hoped. And just working out. As soon as I finish my stream, I go right to the garage and 
heavy bag and I have a whole, I have a bench press and a squat rack in my garage and um, a bike. I do a little bit of biking and a chin up bar. And then I just try to get back, back in shape. So that, that's, that's the goal. The goal is to be summer ready. I'd like to get back to surfing and swimming. I used to do a lot of ocean swimming. Um, so I'd like to get back out there. I haven't been out really since COVID started. So it's begging, it's calling me. Two oh eight. Yep. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying. I'm trying, Tady. Thank you. Uh, try to get down to two hundred pounds, and then once I do, I'll start working in reverse and trying to build up some mass. But healthy mass, not the wrong mass. I was looking like the the wrong side of Chris Pratt for a while there. I didn't really like what I saw. Uh, my buddy's trying to convince me. He's like, Logan, you, you don't want to get in sh too good of shape because when you're older and you lean out, you look older. But if you're chubby, your face stays round and soft. And I was like, ah, that's ho hogwash. <laughs> I don't mind looking a little older. Rather look and be healthy. Yeah, phones are like that. They just type what they want. They do. They type what they want. Well, Hippo came and went. That was so fast. He must be exhausted. He must have just came from a shift or something. Such a good guy. So we're going to have new stuff up on YouTube soon. Uh, like I said, I've been doing some of these offline, but editing them so that, uh, so that I can have them on, uh, where is this on here? It's not here, right? It's here. Oh, it's here. Ah. All right, well, that's not good. We'll have to fix that. Oh, yeah, that's where it is. Booger schnots. Okay, let's get rid of that. So I jumped a layer, and I did all this stuff. I have a white layer under here, and somehow I accidentally penciled on my white layer there. Oh, I remember, because I deleted that stuff there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So we'll have to fix this after. There's, when I watch, when I turn this on. Yeah, okay. We'll get we'll get back to that. Okay. All right, back to here. Let's get back to the sinks. It's funny the little things you don't catch sometimes. So the other stream, I had mentioned something about how I was sick of all the Asian hate and stuff. And uh, I, I know I have precious few followers, but one of them one of them messaged me and said, Hey, dude, I didn't like your stance um, being political while you draw, so I'm not going to follow you anymore. But I wanted to let you know I'm not going to follow you. And I was like, okay, I respect that. Thanks. And so then he asked me, he's like, so why why was it such a big deal to you? And I said, well, my son is Asian. My wife is Asian. My mother-in-law is Asian. These are people who are directly uh, in harm's way, to, in my opinion. Um, you know, they may not look... My wife, my grand, my mother-in-law looks very Asian. She's from Vietnam. Uh, and uh, I would hate to see anything happen to her just because some ignorant person decided to cause violence to her 
and my son um, the same thing I, there are days when he looks uh, super Asian and there are days when he doesn't and my wife she looks beautiful that's all I'm gonna say about that and she's been called everything under the name book some everything in a book sometimes some people decide to call her uh, uh, racial hate with with a Spanish lean not just Asian sometimes people mistaken my wife for being uh, uh, Spanish or uh, Mexican descent and uh, either way it's all gross so I said so anyways I said to him listen I had to you know uh, that, that's how I feel about it and worried for my my immediate family and he was like well you know it's he went into a huge conspiracy diatribe thing uh, and I said well you're wrong so <laughs> you know I appreciate you leaving because I would have if I found out that I'd ask you to leave so anyways it was a really weird conversation but I at least the, at least he was up front and told me he was leaving and his reasons because believe me I you know if I see a number go down I, I want to know why um, I get worried oh did I say something offensive but um, turns out it wasn't offensive it was just I wasn't a part of his racist master plan and that's happened before it's crazy but that's happened before I have uh I have runic tattoos on my arms and I was out at the park with my son in a tank top and out of nowhere this guy comes up to me and says yeah it's good to see another brother here and I was like well, I, I thought he meant like fatherhood you know we're all we're all we're both dads so he was talking about a brother like a dad you know we're dads and we're out here at the park with our kids so I said yeah nice to meet you too and he's like yeah it's great and then he started, then he looked over and he saw my son and wife. And he was just like being super rude about it. And he, his natural comment was, and this was in Burbank. So um, he was like, nice, watering down the pool, huh? And I'm like, what are, you, what are you talking about? And then I realized everything he was talking about, you know. And he was like, dude, you're tats. I, I thought you were one of us. And I was like my tats are uh anyways all right so we are just working on all this fur it's crazy oh how do i get rid of you dog my mod ain't here right now uh let's see here How do I get rid of that? There we go. Thanks. Okay, bye, dude. All right, blocked, gone. All right, so thank you for joining me this morning. We are uh, inking up our Galactic Superhero team member, Carve, who has shown up and is ready to go. He is our strange cat monkey style alien. Some people have said that he bears a little bit of a resemblance to a uh, the Monkey King, which is kind of cool. Um, maybe he's a galactic Monkey King. Maybe that's where the legend started when he came to visit Earth before and uh, help out the humans in need back then. Maybe that's how the Monkey King legend started in this comic book universe. Now this whole thing that I started doing was because I'm writing a new project and I wanted to create a bunch of superheroes and I thought I'd bring people here on a journey about how it is creating superheroes. And uh, Carve is one of the ones that we know and his name is spelled like this. So that's him. And uh, uh, so I was doing his drawings as a way to show people how I create superheroes and go about the ideation and we got two done so far the first one 
I kind of speed jammed him. The Galactic Police Officer. I kind of, compared to Carve, I didn't put as much effort into him. So I think I'm going to go back and give him some love, some superhero love. Um, we'll see. But uh, this is the second of many. I'm, the idea is to do eight of them and a couple of villains so you can see the villains of this universe too. And uh, while they may not be the final characters that are going to appear in the project, they are definitely helping me... Um, get to that point where I want to uh, get have everything ready for the, the project. Now, I've already had somebody say to me they'd love to sculpt this guy. Uh, I'm jacked to see him sculpted, so that'd be kind of cool if he was uh, one of the final characters. I think, I think we're going to have a little vote at the end for the final characters, and then people can decide which ones they like for the team. Um, but it's definitely something that's happening. Um, I have to get it ready. I have to have all the characters solved and ready before the end of summer because I have a meeting with uh, a streaming service executives to pitch the story. And uh, I want to have my Bible ready and all the characters on point so that when we pitch the story, they, uh, you know, the executives have less and less to say no about. I mean, this would be great to, to get on said streaming service uh, as an animated show. Uh, wouldn't it be amazing if I could hire my boys, Todd and and Liam, to do the voices for some of these guys, man? Or, you know, I mean, I wouldn't be the one hiring them, but I could suggest, you know? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it is a Carby Dan. Yeah, maybe he gets half his face... Uh, you know what his weakness is, right? It's an earthly thing called catnip. It's like his, his krypton, his kryptonite, this catnip, captainite. He gets some catnip near him, and man, he's down. Can you imagine that? That would be his weakness. Catnip. Heavy doses of it shot out of a shotgun at him. Just puts him right down. I feel so bad for him now if that was the case. All right. I really like that last song. It really felt like a nice chase song, a good battle song. Um, you know. All right, so I'm just inking up some of the wrinkles and gear on. I'm using a smaller nib uh, for anybody who's tuning in now and wondering. I have two nibs usually when I ink here on Sketchwork. I have like four nibs on my Procreate that I use a lot for inking. Um, but on Sketchbook, I use these two nibs almost exclusively. And then I'll mess around with some others. Each person's different. Some people like more. I have a hair nib that's just for hair, and I have a broken nib, like for when I want to do stuff that looks more rustic, but mostly I use these two nibs. Um, you can see them right here in the middle of my screen. This one here, and this one here, the, these two here. I have these down here, which I play with from time to time. You can see, see how that one has a double line? It's great. That one's here, fat to thick. Now it's super thin. I use those two, but not as much as uh, the one I have here. This one here, this this um, this double broken nib is fantastic for doing really cool stuff. But most of the time, I just use my two customs. So I'm just trying to get this thing. I was really, I, I forgot that I didn't ink it, you know. Um, must have been the, the COVID uh, injection it made me delirious. Somehow I thought I'd finished all this and that I was ready to go to color because the idea today was to 
take this guy into Photoshop for the first time. I was going to take it into Photoshop for everybody and show you how I do my alpha channel and prep this for coloring. And then I was going to do all the, the color flats, get it ready for coloring. Um, we might, might have to do that the next time, which bums me out. I thought, I thought I was ready. I don't know why. Oh, well. Please forgive me, everybody. Um, man, that, that COVID, the first COVID injection I had, nothing. I felt fine. What color fuzz will he have? So I'm thinking that he will have uh, a dark gray with orange tiger stripes uh, on him. And then his gear will be either black or uh, uh, black or a dark brown. I'm not sure yet. Um I think that might be the scheme. I, at first, I was thinking about doing him like the Tampa Bay Buccaneer color scheme. I even went and searched their um, their Pantone colors on the internet because I really like that Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneers color scheme. Maybe still go with it. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm bouncing around between a Tiger tribute where we use some of the colors like Tigra, you know, as an obvious nod to one of my favorite Marvel female characters. Um, but I don't know. I, I do like those color schemes too from the, from the Bucks. I'm not a Buck fan. Uh, I haven't been since, since Gruden left. Uh, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see. It might be those colors. So like, like a like a, a gray like this, so if I would, so it'd be like this grit here. Let me let me widen that. So like this gray highlighted up, and then uh, this orange on top of them, and then some white highlights here. You see them here. So I was thinking like those three for him, and then all his gear would be like this. So that would be his color schemes there with his gear. So you know I would work each one of these up a little bit for highlights, but that would be sort of his color scheme. Maybe, you know, um, I kind of like it. So it might be, it might be like that. And that'd be a nice strong contrast to the other guy who was like a blue and gold in my mind. He's like a blue and gold sort of police force. So we'll see. Oh, that is not black. There we go. But I did notice, this is a strange thing. Um, I did notice. No, that's that picture on Instagram is just pencils. It's just that Instagram uh, lowers the DPI and the pencils are so clean that it looks inked. That's just my pencils. But thank you for thinking that mess was inks. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, that's just all, uh, that's just all pencils on Instagram. I just took a screenshot from my pencils. Um, and that's the thing, you know, it's different for each artist. Uh, I actually have some editors tell me, dude, stop. Your, your pencils are so clean that you can go straight to color. But I don't like, I don't like how published sometimes when you have pencils just, just colored, I don't like how it looks published. So I always, I always defer back to it myself inking it or somebody else yeah I, I think it works I think it works Tady I, I I'm, I'll try it out in Photoshop when I do the Photoshop um, flat. I do import this over to Photoshop for flats um, or pro Procreate. You can you can import it over to Procreate too. Um, I'm this is weird. This is gonna sound weird, but mostly I do Procreate when I'm doing digital concept art, like painting um, along the lines of like you know, like 
Blizzard or Riot when you see that style of painting. I do a lot of that in Procreate. I I don't do any of it here in Sketchbook. I just don't think this this software is built for it um, as well. Although some people do amazing stuff, and it could just be my skill sets are not as good because I've seen people uh, do paintings in Sketchbook that look insane. Um, but for me, I, it doesn't work as well as it does uh, in Procreate or Sketchbook or Photoshop. So uh, each one's different. Uh, did you all watch Mortal Kombat? Hi, Kessie. How are you? It's good to see you. Um, I'm not going to spoil Mortal Kombat. Uh, for those of you who are, haven't seen it yet, we won't, we won't spoil it. Um, I give it a solid C for myself. If, if I was going to grade it. You know, but personal choice varies, right? I thought Godzilla versus King Kong was a nice B. Um, so, you know, if you, you can take that and use it as a scale for my my rating system. Uh, I did not get anything in the mail. Not yet. Oh, actually, I did get one thing in the mail. I got a new shirt. I bought a shirt from uh, Wounded Warriors so that I could help support uh, displaced veterans. Some of our brothers out there who need a need a helping hand. <laughs> yeah, that's an excellent statement, coded. You're right, dude. Not many games get higher than a C. I will give, um, I give Warcraft a solid B plus. Um, I actually, <coughs> even an A minus. Um, I thought that I thought there was so much about Warcraft that worked well for a congested movie. I, you know, it's hard because personally, I thought if they came out with Wrath of the Lich King first. I did a movie based off of Arthas's downfall and then retro back to the history of Warcraft. I thought that would have been uh, a much stronger uh, tactic by the studios um, because, you know, at the at the hype when Warcraft came out, zombies were at a hype. They're at a high level, and if you did Warcraft with Arthas as the Lich King and his zombies, you would have pulled in a bunch of zombie lovers who had no idea about the Warcraft lore, and you also would have pulled in the the Warcraft fans, the Blizzard fans, right? They're very loyal to their projects. And there's, a, you know, there's this consensus that Warcraft bombed. It didn't bomb. It made money for the studio. It made money. Uh, it, it did really well outside of the U.S. But, you know, uh, yeah, so I would have maybe a, an A- minus for Warcraft. Um, but, yeah, you're right. There's not a lot of movies that come from video games that, that get more than a C+. Plus. Um, but yeah, Resident Evil, I mean, almost, what, $4 billion in total gross? So somebody watched it. I didn't like them all, but I loved some of them. They were fun. Yeah, Coded, that's a good, good statement. Um, I saw Monster Hunter. Uh, that's, that's, that was a C. That was a C for sure. Um, but I don't know, you know, uh, what did I just watch? I just watched a video game movie. Oh, but some of the video game based TV shows are great. Like, um, there's a Halo TV series that was based on, uh, based on Halo. Forward on to Dawn, I think it was called. That was fantastic. I love that show. That was a really good show. Really well done. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't big on you know violence or special effects, but the acting was pretty good. Um, I think that's what it was called. Anyways, it was about the academy of young kids who possibly could become Spartans. 
had the girl from uh, had the girl from uh, Narnia in it. I think I, uh, that's the movie I'm talking about. I don't know if anyone else has seen it. Uh, that was pretty good video video game mo TV show. Um, but yeah, overall, most video game movies. I think it's hard for studios to. I don't know. You need. It's tough. I mean, I work with a lot of people in the film industry, so I don't want to. I, I don't want to seem like I'm bashing anybody because those people work really hard to bring us content. And I guarantee you, most of the time when people run in, go into production, nobody's thinking they're starting. They're started off making a bad movie. You know, there's so many factors that play into something not going right that. What I will say is it's never the crew's hard work that factors into a movie being bad. You know, when the crew starts and concept artists and pre -vis or anything else, the idea is to make something entertaining and good for everyone. Prince of Persia made you upset? Yeah, I... I love that game growing up. I played the hell out of it, man. It was a great game. I really enjoyed Prince of Persia. Man, that movie, that game rocked. So I can understand if you were upset. You know? Yeah. What was funny, when I was, I was on one movie location, I was working on a movie for... Uh, we were working on it for about a year. I was on location for almost a year. But the crew that had joined me for pre -vis, half of them had just wrapped... Uh, this is going to shock a lot of people, maybe. But half of them had just wrapped Bioshock. In the can, done. I don't think it'll ever see the light of day. But there's a Bioshock out there somewhere. It's crazy, huh? Yeah, the crew that had joined us for previs on this movie had all come from the Bioshock for well a lot of them not all of them but a lot of them um, you have some really amazing concept artists who keep bumping into each other on film after film and if you get to work with them you're you're really lucky to get that but anyways this Bioshock film they were talking about I mean We'll never see the light of day, I guess. See, this is great. Now, hi, Ems. How are you? This is awesome. Good job, Coded. We got people talking about movies. Exact reason why I love doing this stream was this. Getting people talking about stuff. Different opinions and different views on a movie. Oh, that's all I know, Tady, is that they said... Uh, that they finished it, they wrapped all the principal shooting, and then it got it got kaputted. I wonder how many movies are like that, though. I mean, you think about you think about something like Dawn of War, the second one, or not Dawn of War, uh, Red Dawn with Chris Hemsworth. Clearly, uh, that movie was being put on ice, and then Chris blew up. And then all of a sudden it came out. And you can tell it wasn't something that was planned as a strategy because uh, Chris Hemsworth dies in that movie early. So he wasn't the main focus of the film. He wasn't the big character. Um, and that was done before his huge rise in Thor, you know. So that was just a studio saying, oh, okay, well, a movie we were going to shelf has a big star in it now let's get it out there spoiler that movie's eight years old ten years old no spoiler alerts after that that's on you you have to go see it it's on you after a certain amount of time What games has everybody been playing? I have been playing Zombies Black Ops. I owe, I owe Johnny a game. Actually, she just pinged me and said, hey, when are we playing Zombies? So I owe Johnny a game. 
Um, maybe if she wants to play today, we can play today. Just stream some zombie hunting. Cassie, do you have do you have Black Ops? Do you want to do some zombie hunting with me and Johnny? M's anybody? Um, just just so everyone knows, I won't be streaming Tuesday. It's my son's birthday, and uh, we're gonna head out early. We're taking him to the zoo for for his birthday, so I don't think I'll be streaming. Uh, Tuesday. Also, my mother-in-law is here, and uh, my son is just over the moon because Grandma's here for <laughs> Oh man, I'm I'm putting in putting in work. I'm getting sweaty. This, this whole thing is sweaty. Oh, no. Um, well, we can Fortnite it. I know you guys have Fortnite. My son just got that inky skin for his birthday. He's in love. He loves it. He, uh... You can't wait to get like 15 kills so there's 15 little ghosts on his Fortnite buddy's legs and arms. He loves that new skin. I was thinking of getting it too, but man, that's a lot of money. 20 bucks. I am on a freelancer's budget right now. Yeah, he's excited. Thank you, Ems. I'll, I'll tell him. He likes people saying happy birthday to him. He wants everybody to know. raining here today so if you hear anything in the background it might be the rain um, it's actually beautiful but it's making things really really um, really humid and hot all right there we go he's nine going on 40 He's, uh, yes, Tady, that's about right. He's super smart, and uh, he's starting to realize his evil genius power, so that's a concern for my wife and I, and he's starting to, he's starting to figure out that he can mastermind things and take over the world, so uh, we're working on that. We're trying to control his urges. Oh, thanks, Kessie. I'll tell him. I'll make sure he sees them all. Yeah, he's doing great. He's a good kid, man. I saw all the um, the the stream follow. Somebody gave a shout out to me, and it was nice. Thank you all for jumping in and and giving me a nice endorsement too. I really appreciate all of you who uh, gave that endorsement. Now that was really cool. I didn't expect any of that. So whenever you see things like that on the on on tw Twitch and stuff, it's such a nice feeling. Everybody's so sweet. You don't deserve it. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping, so I could just be a minion later. 
Maybe he, you know, he gives me a, a simple job. I get to press the red button whenever he's about to do something. Evil. Like, you know, so I'll try and be nice to him as long as I can. Parenting is hard. Actually, it's not true. Because he has such an amazing mom, uh, he'll never be an evil genius. Um, he's, he's just too good. He just likes to help people too much. It's not going to happen. Which is great. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I agree. I'm really so happy I met the people from Todd and, and Liam's group. So nice. And then we had some people previous to that, Thormoto and some other guys. All just really nice people. Um, Irish and everybody's just been super nice. Just makes streaming that much funner, you know. And minus one. Minus one. Mostly, mostly nice people. All right, who's... I need the drama. What's going on? Mostly. Uh-oh. Dun-dun. Dun-dun-dun-dun. What is going on? Drama, spill the tea. Maybe not here, but how about the next time we're chatting and... I mean, if someone's treating you badly, I, I want to know. There should be no bullying. Especially the really nice people. You guys are awesome. You don't, you don't deserve any bullying. Hercules. Thank you. But no one's no one's hurting you guys, right? No one's uh banging on you guys or trolling you. I hope not, anyways. I know Kessie had some some crap and I felt bad for her. She doesn't deserve any of that. Oh, uh, well, I don't like when men target anybody. That sounds like, excuse me for saying it, but that just sounds like bullshit right there. Now it's a concern. You don't deserve trolls. Um, that's why I just block people. That's why Kessie's here. She can just block out all the hate. She's got that. One of her fingers has like a callus. It's really hard, like a really hard callus. And she's just like, click, click, click. Ban, ban, ban. And she starts banning people. Oh, well, that sucks. Kessie, was that an accurate uh, description of how you ban people? Ban, ban, ban! Like that? Is that how you do it? Oh, nice. Yeah, she needs a Thor hammer.
Thor hammer would be good. I have a Thor hammer here. Griffin and I use it to bonk each other on the head. It's a, it's a Nerf Thor hammer that I helped develop. I worked on it when I was at uh, Hasbro. So I have a Thor hammer. I think uh, David Vonner was the uh, was the lead uh, designer on that one, though. We all just chipped in ideas. That'd be so funny, right? I need I need like one of those like fatality memes of Kessie with a hammer. You know, like she's holding it. Fatality. Every time she bans somebody, that would be funny. That would be hilarious. All right, so if you're just tuning in, we're still working on the superheroes. Um, right now I'm inking up Carve. I, I totally, so Thursday I got my second COVID injection and Friday it wiped me out, which I wasn't expecting because the first time, the first injection didn't do anything to me. So I got the COVID injection and then I worked out like normal at five in the morning or four in the morning. I did my workout, but then when I woke up, I felt like absolutely dog water. So, uh, uh, I just stayed in bed all day Friday. Uh, it was, I was poop hammer and, uh, um, I didn't get to stream like I wanted to. So I apologize. And I thought I had inked this guy up and he was ready to go. I was actually, today's plan was to go into Photoshop and do the alpha, alpha layers and flatten, do all the flats, color, color flats for you all and get this guy colored up in front of you and just start streaming some color for a change. Cause we never do color much. And so I thought it'd be great to, to do some color for you all. But, uh, it turns out that I did not, I did not ink them yet, <laughs> as you can see. And so we're inking them now. And I hope you find the inks as enjoyable as color. Uh, I apologize. We will get it done, though. I think it's going to be cool to go into Photoshop with this guy and uh, throw a little bit of color on him. You know, I think it'll be fun. Uh, why are you betraying me, Pen? There we go. Awesome. That's awesome, Cassie. I wouldn't have expected there not to be. You know what? You know what would be funny? If we got you the helmet like like Adventures and Babysitting. Remember that little girl? And she had that Thor helmet that that she gave to Thor because she thought he uh, trivia. Who remembers? Does anyone remember the movie Adventures in Babysitting? And do you remember who played Thor in it? He also played a villain in a, a Marvel TV series. It is an old one. That is an old one. You got that one coded? Yeah, okay. I'll give you a hint. He played Kingpin in a Daredevil TV series. Yeah, she was. She was, wasn't she? Yeah, she was, she was beautiful. That's right, Cassie, that's right. A young, very fit, very handsome Vincent.
Yeah. Blonde hair, muscles. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> on VHS, yes, it's very old. Very old. I love all movies, young, old, new. Or not young, old or new, fresh. I'll try any movie at least once. And then if it stinks, that's it. But if it's good, I'll give it a rewatch. I'm a very big fan of uh, rewatch. Repeat movies. I love watching movies that stand up to the, to the test of time or in my mind stand up <laughs> okay I admit it Tatey got me on that one man that that was a uh, that was funny. <coughs> nice one, Tady. Um, if you weren't here earlier, uh, we were talking about, we're going to have a, I'm going to do a new draw, uh, a new raffle type thing. Um, and the winner will get to pick their own commission. And the commission could be anything they want. Um, it could be a Fortnite character. It could be their own character. They could make it up. Whatever it is, um, I'm going to put up a little video here describing the contest so people will be able to come back and check it out. And then um, we're gonna launch the con contest and um, the contest will be, the winner gets, uh, there'll be two winners, one here and one on Instagram. And the winners will get a uh, commissioned piece um, that I'm going to film, me drawing and edit. And then you can put in, uh, you you'll be able to, to watch it or see it, and then you'll also get the image sent to you. Uh, that way you have uh, both. This cool video about the image being created and the, um, the image itself. So that's coming up. That's gonna be a cool contest. Um, I'm just wrapping up the t-shirts. They were supposed to go out on Friday, but my COVID sickness prevented us from leaving the house and get the COVID shot. I'm not sick with COVID, but getting my COVID shot wiped me out for a day. Um, so that all that will be sorted out this week. Your t-shirts will be hitting the, the mail. Um, I still have to track down a couple. Liam won't enter it. Liam does not even pay attention to me. I am like the furthest thing away from Liam's radar. We're just, we're, we're, we're like, we're buddies, but he's got way too many other things to do and focus on than to, to worry about what I'm doing. That's not how it works. Our boy's a big star. Got lots of other stuff. It's gonna get busier and busier too, man. His performances have been top notch. I think we're gonna see less and less of Liam. He's gonna be doing more and more films. That's what I hope for him, anyways. I hope I hope all that good stuff happens for him. Oh, amazing, Ems. 
That's great. I just started following you, Ems. Thanks for the kind words on uh, Instagram. That was really beautiful. So I just started following you. Oh, I'll be there as soon as this COVID thing done. I wouldn't mind showing up. Um, I've been asked to attend a couple in Europe too. Uh, once, once I, I have a I have a show in uh, Singapore. Uh, once the once the, everything slows or settles down or slows down with COVID, I have a show coming up in Singapore for uh, a group of collectors who are fans of my art. Um, I'm supposed to go there with Jimmy Chung, the, the amazing Marvel artist. So we'll see if that happens uh, sooner than later. But I would love to come to Australia. And then I got invited to a German Comic Con, um, which would be kind of cool too. Um, if I guess one of my covers for Marvel is very popular over there. Um, it's the Marvel Zombie Spider-Man. Um, very <laughs> for some reason it, it did really well over there uh, um, I, I had one German fan he told me he paid the equivalent of 150 US dollars to get his his Marvel zombie uh, cover and he was so happy about it and then he had he had asked the the German comic book collector about the comic-con uh, about maybe bringing me over so I got a little letter saying would you be interested my, my buddy Mark Brooks has gone to this con, so I, uh, I, I think it's a good one. Um, the name is escaping me right now, but it might be something cool to do, right? I haven't been to Germany in a long time. Oh, I just watched a movie today called Shooter with Mark Wahlberg. It's an older movie. But I just forgot how good it was until I'd seen it again. Man, it was such a good movie. It's one of Mark's best, actually. Oh, that's great, Coded. That'd be nice. Things are really settling down here in California. We're getting really high marks now for how COVID is being treated, thankfully. It was a little bit uh, crazy here for a while, especially with the uh, different championships being won by the uh, Lakers and the Dodgers playoffs. And fans were just running about, man. It was crazy here. We had high, high infection rates. People catching it. I haven't seen it, but I think I'm going to watch it now. I know when the show first came out, it got a little bit of hate because uh, Ryan was getting a little bit of hate. There was a little bit of uh, controversy about him. Some domestic rumors, violence stories or something, domestic abuse stories or something. So I know that he was getting a lot of flack for a bit. I don't know if those rumors are true. You know, you never, everything is it's crazy. But um, I know when the show came out, I didn't know how long its legs would last. It's not out still though, right? It's, it's finished now, right? It got canceled. Only three seasons. Did they wrap it or just cancel it? Man, look at Coded. Just a wealth of knowledge. Great, dude. Is it dude or is it... Or is it not dude? Please tell me if you're not... I don't want to be calling you dude if it's wrong, if I'm being rude. 
I call everyone dude. It's so bad. Just coded is fine. Perfect. <laughs> That's what we'll call you then. Awesome. All right, how are we doing? Not bad, not bad on time. Inking always takes me a little longer than pencil. Um, ooh, I know. Uh, Diablo 4 betas are going to... Or alphas... No, sorry. Betas are going to be going out soon. The alphas already went out. That's pretty cool. I wouldn't mind getting into a... A little bit of Diablo beta. I'm looking forward to that game. He just gave up. I love that game. I played every class now. So much fun for me. But I didn't like Pillars of the Earth or the other one. Which are very similar to Diablo. And I got real bored of Minecraft Dungeons because that was... Super repetitive and super easy. Um, I know that's a terrible thing to say, but there's just so much more they could do with it, I think. It has so much potential. There's a show on Amazon right now. I think it's Amazon where Sherlock Holmes hires a bunch of kids to solve some, to help him with some, some stuff in, I'm curious about that series. I might watch that. It's kind of cool premise where Sherlock Holmes asks these kids to help him out because he's, you know, he's dealing with Professor Moriarty and he needs needs a little help on these other cases so I, I think I'm gonna I think that's the premise anyways I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes. Oh, yeah, true story. I haven't seen it yet. I want to get into that. Um, I really need to. 
I really need to. I'm a, I'm like a creature of habit though. I watch things. If something, if there's something I like, I'll watch it more than once. So right now I am focused on Game of Thrones, and um, I'm rewatching the 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 HP Lovecraft series and uh, Banshee. Um, I do that, and and then I miss out on all these great shows that I should be checking out. And I know that was one of them. That's one of them on my list. Just looks so good. And then I missed the Oscars last night. I completely missed it. I didn't even realize the Oscars were on until after I saw the news saying, "Hell, oh, so and so won." And I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> I just didn't. I didn't. I didn't have any desire to see it or check up on it. All my favorite movies hardly ever win, anyways, so it doesn't matter. Man, wasn't it amazing last week? Will Silney uh, raided my channel. The splash one. Oh, the the animated series. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I have so many friends connected to the Spawn franchise, and uh, I even got to be a part of it uh, when Todd was still doing the book. He'd come in in the morning. Uh, when I worked at Image Comics, and he would, he would, um, if you're in there early and he had a deadline, he would drop a page on your desk, one of the spawn pages, and say, "Hey, uh, can you, can you help me out with these lines? Or I'm late, and I need to get a couple of more uh, pages inked." And he, you know, throw you 200 bucks, and you'd help him ink up, you know, a little bit of the pages. It was really cool. He'd give the bulk of the work to Jonathan and Danny Meeky, the two pros, but it was really fun getting to, to do backgrounds and ink, you know, fill in stuff for them and, and do some of the 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 not as important inks on the on the page, which was really cool. And then of course you had the the yeah, high calibration. Um, yeah, it was really cool because then Todd would impart some of his wisdom on you while you're inking with them. And, uh, of course, Todd and I both being Canadian, we talk a lot about hockey and, and our sports connection. We both played sports uh, at high levels. And um, it was really fun just getting to know him. It, and then from getting to know Todd, I, I got to meet his dad. And then Jack and I just had an amazing... Uh, Todd's dad and I just had an amazing relationship. We'd meet every Comic-Con and have breakfast and talk about hockey and... Just great stuff. Uh, I, I really miss him. Uh, rest in peace to him. Hope you're doing well, Calibration. Hope your weekend went well. Yeah, Will's top notch, man. I really appreciate him dropping by. He didn't have to do that for me. That was nice. He, uh, we have, we share the same colorist, uh, and uh, I've been following his stuff for a while now. I just love. I'm a big fan of his art, so it was great that he uh, came by. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm Will Silney. He's on here on Twitch. He streams on Twitch. He's got a it's got one of the best shows I've ever seen. It's just classy, uh, well done, really well put together, top-notch production. Um, I think he's got moving pictures and animation and great borders. I love his borders. Just super envious of his borders. I need to make some nice borders like that. Uh, yeah, things are good. Feeling better now. I got my COVID shot. It wiped me out last week, so I wasn't able to finish my weekly stream as I had hoped. Um, last week's kind of got delayed, but... All good now, all good now. Yeah, 
Yeah, Carve is looking great, right? Just so you guys remember, his name is Carve. Um, I think his name is Carve Catan. I think that's his name. Um, and uh, Carve is a like cat monkey alien race. He's part of the new superhero team I'm working on. I think I think I like him enough that he will be a part of it. Um, I really like him. It's kind of cool to stretch and not just draw human faces in your superheroes. So we'll see. Some of my very favorite Marvel characters are from outer space. Uh, you know, Gladiator and Nova and uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy and um, uh, Scott Summer's dad and the Star Jammers and I just love the whole idea of being out in space protecting more than just Earth. I just love that global vibe or galaxy vibe. It's kind of cool. My uh, mother-in-law is here visiting my son for his birthday and um, I hope she doesn't think I'm crazy like I'm talking to myself in here <laughs> I don't think she you know really gets all this streaming stuff <laughs> and by the way if I haven't thanked you all for tuning in and watching thank you very much for tuning in today um, I really appreciate everyone no give carb nips and boops is no 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 no, 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 no. Yeah, I muted myself for a sec. Oh, there. Sorry. I, I was coughing from my allergies, and uh, I um, I muted it so you guys didn't have to hear it. I have a throat specialist I'm going to go see soon and uh, get to the bottom of this, this allergy issue. I never used to have it. Like I was saying, muted. Um, even traveling, touring. Uh... 
sports, whatever. Uh, I didn't have this. And now when I moved to LA, then it got crazy. So uh, it has something to do with the pollution factor here, I think. And the weather down here is really not the greatest for my allergies. It sucks. But I didn't want you guys to be stuck hearing it because it was a it was a long cough. All right. Well, the inks are coming out nice. They're very lean, very thin inks. Um, as you can see here, you can see here how lean they are. Super lean. Thin, thin inks. I'd love some mountain air. I miss the mountains, Tatey. Uh, where should I go? Right now, PVP. Yeah, I like there too, Coded. Uh, I went there for New Year's Eve once, and it was beautiful. I just love it. That would be a nice destination to, to live. I really liked it there. You know, I don't know if it's come to Aussie Mountains. Oh, that'd be great. I like the eucalyptus. Sold. Sold, Tatey. Plus the added bonus that everything will kill you there, right? Wait, was that Comic Con that you guys went? Drop bears. What's a drop bear? Is that a koala? Do they ambush you from the sky? Now you have to tell me what a drop bear is. I like that. That sounds interesting. That's a thing? That's amazing. Oh, someone should make a movie about drop bears. <laughs> that movie would be so good for sci-fi channel. fake things boo it's not it's not real i could just that'd just be funny if you look to your left folks you can see this fucking drop there it'd be funny darn i thought it was real
<laughs> That's awesome. I just watched this uh, sequel to The Train to Busan. Uh, it was part two or part three. Maybe part three. It was so nuts. I love Busan zombies. They are the greatest zombies in all the zombie genre. They will mess you up. These zombies do parkour. They are mad. They're, there's you know what? I, you know, World War Z zombies, pretty scary. But Train to Busan zombies are the best. They are absolutely nuts. Wait, koalas have STDs. How they got it is something I don't want to know. <laughs> oh, hello, little fella. Yeah, you fancy a date? Maybe it's um, maybe it's some weird college tradition over there. <laughs> Coded. Ugh. I love that movie, dude. I love it. Uh, the second one is great. The animated cartoon is awesome. I guess there's three of them. I need to see one more of them. Ugh. Koalas have chlamydia. Dang. Mm, poor koalas. I, I don't know. Double and banned. <laughs> I guess you can't say chlamydia on uh, Twitch. Bye, Tady. <laughs> Logan, where's Tady? Oh, uh, she's banned because she's spreading rumors about STDs and koalas. Yeah, how they got it is a mystery. Okay. I don't want to know. I just don't. Some things you shouldn't know. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but there's this amazing parody, horror parody video called Handjob Cabin. I think that's what it's called, Hand, Handjob Cabin. It is so funny. I couldn't stop laughing every time I see it. Gotta keep my mouth, my voice down though. I don't want my mother-in-law hear me talking filthy. It's already tough. I'm not a doctor, so she's not she's not thrilled with me. Oh my god, it's so funny. It's on YouTube.
everybody I send it to are always like, what is this thing? Sorry, I got a text here. There we go. Sorry, apologies. Um, I know I've I've explained to some people. I'm waiting for a bunch of. Yeah, you never know. Well, except that she's uh, like four foot three. She's this. Tiniest little Vietnamese woman in the universe. She's tough as nails, though, man. There's nobody works harder than my mother-in-law. She is, she's amazing when it comes to how much she has endured and done since coming here from Vietnam and escaping uh, the Vietnam War. I, I have a lot of, a lot of pride and admiration for my mother-in-law and everything she survived to provide and build up her business and stuff. It's pretty amazing. Griffin's got a grandmother that he can look up to and be really proud of. It is, especially when you're six foot three. It's like right there, splitting a difference almost. Although as I get older, I'm shrinking. I may be six foot two and a half now. Yeah, Griffey is uh, almost her height. He's he's getting there now. The doctor says Griffin should probably be around six three, maybe six four. Um, I I just I don't care if he's six three or six four. I just want him to be happy and if and be able to play the sports and stuff he wants to play without feeling like. It's hard work, or it's 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 tougher than the other kids. I don't want him. I want him to have fun without feeling like he's getting picked on and stuff. My little brother, uh, you know, my sister is six feet tall, and my brother was. Uh, he never grew. I I was really small until grade eleven, and then my I shot up. My brother thought, oh, that's gonna happen for me. It never happened for him, um, and so he just stayed. I think he was five five six. Five five, uh, so he it never happened for him, and I just felt bad for him because he had to prove himself twice as hard all the time. And I think he got sick of hearing people say, "Oh, you're Logan's brother," you're all the time. It's, "Oh, you're Logan's brother." Oh, you're Logan. He was an amazing kid on his own in his own right. So I just felt bad. And then my sister, you know, she was six feet tall and uh, she had David Bowie eyes. She had two different colored eyes and she was beautiful. And, yeah. So I felt bad. He was stuck in the middle. Yeah. Although my brother was beast. He uh, used to, com he wanted to compete in the uh, Mr. Uh, Canada, Mr. 
Mr. Ontario Bodybuilding. So he was jacked. He was beast. He used to love working out. I remember he, um, uh, the most I've ever bench pressed without sounding like a jock bro was around 300 pounds and my brother beat it and he was so happy and I've never passed that ever. Um, and he beat it. He was just so thrilled that he, he finally got me, you know, he was like, yes, you'll never beat this. I'm the king. And I felt so good for him that I didn't care. You know, I was just so proud of him at the time. So I was like, yep, yeah, that's all you, man. That's all you. I'm never going to be come close to that. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was in good company. Junior was awesome. Wow, we're almost done. This is great. Appreciate everyone sticking around and watching us ink this guy up. I saw a guy the other day, oh, I was watching Banshee, and I thought to myself, the lead actor from Banshee could absolutely be Wolverine if they're looking for a new Wolverine to cast. Um, I always wanted it to be Scott Eastwood, uh, Clint Eastwood's son. I thought he'd make a nice, there's a nice balance between him looking a little bit like Hugh Jackman and his dad, who I always thought when Clint Eastwood was young, I thought he would have been the best Wolverine ever. Um, but I always wanted it to be Scott Eastwood for a long time. Um, as he's growing into his acting chops and stuff. But then I saw this guy on Banshee and I was like, man, this guy, this guy is Wolverine. They put some muscle on this guy, get him jacked up, and he he could look and portray Wolverine. He's got a, when he fights, he has a great savage view, like an attitude and, and feel to his, his mannerisms and character. That guy would be a fantastic Wolverine. So I'm not going to give him tiger stripes on his tail. They're more like uh, a bunch of lemur stripes, like those lemur rings that are on a, or a red panda. Yeah, see, that's what I thought. I thought it'd be a nice way to connect the two. You know, I know a lot of other people wanted Clint to be Wolverine too. And, but this guy from, uh, this guy from, um, from Banshee, the TV series, man. He would just make a fantastic Wolverine. So now I have two favorites that I wouldn't mind, wouldn't mind seeing. Did you all see that Chris Pine has been cast in, in the Dungeon & Dragons movie? Isn't that cool? Yeah, he plays Homelander. That's right. He's just got a great sense of savagery to him. 
So yeah, Chris Pine cast in the Dungeons and Dragons movie for uh, Entertainment One and Hasbro. That's kind of cool. That's a solid casting choice. Somebody's going to bring you some credibility to the to the film. That's awesome. I remember when one of my bosses at Hasbro, Steve Drucker, was working on D&D movie stuff. I got to work on it with him a little bit. That was fun. Get all the inside dope on uh, what possibly could be happening in a D&D movie. Now, I don't know if it's... I don't know if any of that stuff's still coming, and I do have an NDA, so I can't talk about any any plot stuff I know. Just to respect Hasbro and, and old N NDAs that I've signed. But, uh... I'm looking forward to this Dungeon and Dragons movie. I hope it's a good one. Oh, is he uh, from New Zealand? Oh, well, he's an awesome actor. All right, I know it's two hours, but we're going to. So if you were to shave his fur away, uh, this is what you would see. He's got this hook 
hidden inside his his tail. Um, and this is like a last emergency. He tries to keep it on a down low, quiet, so nobody knows about it. But inside his tail is this hook, just in case he needs it at any time. So I thought that's kind of a cool little add-on to him. Oh, Carl would be great. Yes. So true story, I got to have a dinner with Carl. Um, it was a really good story. Uh, so I had worked... I had worked on the X-Men for two days, um, the X-Men movie for two days for Brian Singer. And during that time, I got to meet uh, three amazing guys, Tyler Maine, uh, James Marsden, and Ray Park. And Ray Park and I um, would meet again and work on G.I. Joe together. But I got to work uh, with those guys for a day, and I got to meet them. And the cool part about it was that I got... The friendship I made with Tyler, James, and Ray lasted. We stayed friends. And uh, uh, that was really cool. So I would text James once in a while and say, Hey, man, congrats on this or congrats on that. And James was always super cool about it. Mr. Marsden was, uh, you know, we weren't, we weren't dudes or anything, but we were able to professionally check in on each other and say congrats or good luck and uh, you know, I was able to get his son a tour of Blizzard and, and just like just little things back and forth. We would just say things back and forth to each other, you know? And so I was on production on this movie in New Orleans and I was with the I was with the art department. I was with one of the producers from the art department and one of the art directors and we were eating at this place called Nola, uh, which was uh, one of Emerald's uh, restaurants there. Uh, a buddy of mine, his dad was the manager for the restaurant so he'd hooked us up upstairs in a nice vip and uh we had all this good food and stuff it was great but sitting across from us at the table beside us was uh was james marsden carl urban and john krasinski and so uh i recognized james james recognized me we said hi and uh you know we were just about to dive into another beer me and my buddy mike who was on the art 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 team with me and James was like, hey, let's just crunch the tables and just have a moment. And we ha haven't seen you in a while. Let's catch up. So there I was sitting with with James Marsden, Carl Urban, uh, and John. Uh, they were, I guess they were all in Louisiana filming other projects. It was a crazy, hectic month. There was a month where um, in my building, my production building, um, we had the Expendables on the floor below us. We had Judge Dredd. Uh, near us and uh, something else it was just everybody was there at once and so anyways it was just a great time I still think I have a picture on on Facebook with it because uh, um, I had posted right after you know uh, we had eaten I might be I, I, I can't remember if I left it up or not but I look terrible James looks awesome um, it's really tough standing beside very good looking people all the time it just crushes your soul but anyway anyways they were super nice and super cool and carl was very cool um of course they had a, a, a bazillion ladies looking at i mean that was like that's like a buffet for women who love handsome men actors right there's the three of them sitting there at the table um but it was really cool it was nice that he recognized me and said hi and we chatted chatted up for a little bit um that's really cool. And I think Carl would make an excellent X-Men. I don't know who, but he would make an amazing X-Men. I really wanted the Judge Dredd TV show to happen with him in it. That'd be so amazing. Yeah, it was like a triforce of super good-looking Hollywood men, right? Yeah, John and... And, and James and, and, and Carl all there at one table. I'm uh, sure there was energy and lights glowing around them and stuff, but it was really cool. It was a very popular evening that night. Uh, um, Mr. Stallone was there at another table for a while and uh, just craziness. My favorite chocolate dessert was there too. 
Uh, who? Who? Carl for Gambit? Hmm. Double the dread. Yeah, different table, though. Um, he was with some other guys. But I saw him all the time. I think he was close to my hotel. I was staying at the Marriott for uh, like six months. Um, my The Marriott I was in had... Um, I, Jason Statham was in my Marriott. Um, he would work out in the gym every day. I was there. Every night when I went in, he would be there. And uh, would just nod and say hi. And, you know, oh, you're back at it. Yeah, I'm back at it. You back at it? Yeah, man, I'm back at it. And uh, so I was working out uh, there and... Um, the other guy who was in my hotel was uh, uh, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp was in my hotel, and I'd see him. He'd come. He, he was hilarious because he'd come into the elevator still wearing the the makeup and costume from. He was shooting Twenty One Jump Street. I think that that's what he was filming. So we'd see him in my hotel all the time, and he was he was polite and stuff. You know, you just say hi to him, and that was it. It wasn't like it wasn't like a conversation, but. Uh, whenever I saw Jason in the gym, he was super, super conversive and, and would talk a little about a little bit about working out and stuff and, you know, things like that. It was it was cool. Uh, it was, it's hard work, though, being in a hotel for six months. Uh, I spent six months in L.A. in a hotel and then six months in Louisiana in a hotel. It's hard work, man, sitting in that hotel and getting up every day and going to work. Um, it was tough. A lot of credit go to those guys who have to do it all the time. Okay, so we've got we got all the inks done for our our character. Super digging this. Um, so I really like where we are with it, and he's looking kind of cool. I appreciate everyone who's. No, uh. Well, you know what? Here's the weird thing about it, though, Tady. It really is a small world once you start working on a lot of productions or going to to interview for a job on a production and stuff. Or or if you're stuck on the lot, if you're working on the lot, it's amazing all the people you see on the lot. And the truth is they're just regular Joes like everyone else. They're just doing their job and, you know, working on their craft and then going home to their families and and trying to make the best out of this life they can with the, the skills and talents they have. And it's amazing once you start working on the lots and stuff, how many people you run into. Uh, and then you just realize that they're just there doing their job like you are, you know? Um, and then once you get past sort of the, 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 the idol worshiping or the, the bright lights, they're exactly coded. They're just really nice people. You know, uh, they're just hardworking people like you. And uh, I don't know. It's cool. And it's really f funny. Uh, um, we became friends with an actor who's, you know, he had a, he had a fair amount of success um, when he was younger. He was in Top Gun and, and Terminator and a couple other movies. And uh, we became really, he was like a, a mentor, a father to me, a big brother, more like a big brother. But everywhere we went, he treated everyone so much, so gracefully and with such respect. You know, we went we went out to buy some baby back ribs. We were having a barbecue at his house once. And uh, we got there, and everyone recognized him right away. And he just deflected it all back to people and let them feel special about themselves. And he was such a great guy, such a nice guy. Um, I just I love having that friendship with people like that who are they're just doing their job. They're just they're out there trying to make entertainment for people. No, there is no Brad Pitt story. Uh, I I have never met Brad Pitt. Um, no Brad Pitt. Sorry, <laughs> uh, not even close. Um, I think we're talking about otherworldly actors when you get to Brad Pitt and George Clooney and those guys. Those guys are. Um, um, that's different, man. That'd be cool. I don't. I don't even know how I'd act if I met Brad Pitt. Uh, I'm a big fan of his. Um, he's an architect and an artist, and uh, guys like him and Viggo Mortensen, actors like that, where they're they can do more than one thing. James Cameron, the director, producer, writer, he's a fantastic artist and tactician technician himself, 
um, guys like that where they can do more than one thing they're they're true men of ages you know they I those are the, those are those are really special uh, creatives to me and uh, Brad Pitt's like that he you know he designs stuff and he builds things with his hands and the acting is a craft to him and um, I think those are we don't see a lot of those people they're rare like Vigo uh, Vigo is super shocked at how much stuff that man can do and how talented he is. I'm surprised he's in acting at all. Um, no, yeah, that that guy's that's up there. That's like meeting Joe Montana or Tom Brady or something. That'd be, I'd still fanboy out about that. He's, he kind of seems to me like Hollywood royalty acting, like the, like when you thought about the old days with Frank Sinatra and stuff, the Clooney's and the Brad Pitts and stuff. I think they they sort of feel. Oh, nice. See, just that's the thing, right? There's always somebody who knows somebody because they went to school with them, or you know, they worked with them before they got big. Um. My wife used to go to the same classes as Gwen Stefani when she went to college. She was in the same same grade and uh, classes as Gwen before the, she blew up with no doubt. And, uh, you know, that's just, just part of it. Yeah, Renaissance men. That's it, Tady. Renaissance men. They're just, they're a special breed. Yeah, Coded, that is cool. And being in the music scene is awesome, dude. All right, what time is it? It's 8.11. Okay, so I still have... I have 15 more minutes, so I'm going to keep going for a while. Um, I'm going to show you how I do a PSD file here. So let's just... Uh, Save this as a PSD. All right. All right. We got it as a PSD. Great. Uh, let me just save it again back as a TIFF. I work on it as a TIFF normally, but we'll, when I'm in Photoshop, I convert it to uh, PSDs. But let's just save this one more time just to be safe. Um, and then here, give me a sec here. Uh, be right back. Let me let me just uh, open up Photoshop. I'm still here. There's just my backgrounds. I'm just making sure. Oh man, that's cool, coded. Yeah, my my cousin my cousin was in a band that got one of their songs featured in a Spider-Man soundtrack. I was so proud of him. It was really cool. All right, um, here we go, uh, back to Twitch Live. All right, we're in Photoshop. Hello, everybody. Um, let, me, uh, let me open up this image here. We can check it out. Uh, here, actually, let me do this for a sec while I find it. Sorry, I got stuff here. For people's commissions that I, I don't know if they'd want people to see it yet. So just want to make sure that uh, I'm protecting those people. Um, where are we going? Where is it? Dun, dun, dun. Where are you at, pitcher? Hmm. I gotta find it. One sec there. All right. So where did we save this? As? Save as. Oh, I see. Gotcha. All right. Found it. Okay. I'll open. Download folder. Let's go to group by date. Here we go. Open this up. 
All right. Okay, we're back. And here's our picture. So, uh, image, rotate, counterclockwise. All right, so we have our picture here. We have our cool cat. You know, here he is. And uh, the layer that's selected is the inks. Yep, so we're going to select all. So this is if you want to do an alpha channel before you start coloring. Um, you can do this. Uh, this is the way I do it when I'm when I'm doing comic book art or something. Uh, you, you, there's different ways of setting up your art for different stuff. But when I'm doing uh, comic book art, uh, this is the way I do it for uh, an alpha channel. So we're just going to do this. Shift, oh, shift, shift. All right, I think we've, oh, right there, we got it all. Okay, we got it all. So I have all the art here selected, and I'm gonna select inverse. And so now I've copied it. I'm gonna control C, the artwork only, and then I'm gonna go over to channels, and I'm gonna create a new channel. And that new channel is gonna be an alpha channel. You see here, alpha one. And I'm making sure the opacity is 100% true black. Selected area, 100% true black. And we say, okay. And then we're going to, we're going to, on that page, we're going to drop the image there. So now it's there. So then I'm going to go up to RGB. I have all these layers here. You can turn those layers off. You can turn them all off if you want. I'm going to make a new layer as soon as I, here we go. All right. So we have a new layer here and we're going to call this layer background flats and put it at the bottom. So I've turned off all the other layers. All I have left is this artwork layer and my backgrounds. There you go. See, it just popped up. So, but I'm going to do my flats up here in the RGB. So if you, just bring this over. You see this? I'm doing my uh, my flats, my color flats in the RGB channel. Okay. So there we have path layers channel. So I'm in my channel. I'm just gonna move it over here, and I'm doing all my color flats in this channel. Now, if we remember my layers, I saved a. We had a color sample here. Is it here? There it is. So we had a color sample right there, and I'm gonna go back over here, and what I'm gonna do is. I'm not using a brush at this point. I am using, um, I'm going to use a pencil. As soon as I get it to pop up, it's popping up. It might be hidden under one of my other pieces here. Uh, okay, let's, there we go. So I'm gonna use a pencil and I'm gonna grab my colors. So we said that his, we said that his, uh, that his, um, there we go. That I, These are the colors I had picked to color them. And all I'm going to do with the pencil is just this. Uh, let me zoom first. Pencil. I'm just gonna do this. And the reason I use a, a pencil instead of a brush is a brush will dither and feather out, which doesn't leave you clean pixels to select. But if you use a, pen, a pencil instead of a brush, it, it's just using clean pixels to select the area you're going to color. So I can just do this right along the black with, with this pencil. And the cool thing about it is if I go through stuff, I can go through it, I can cut it off with the pencil. With the brush, it doesn't work as well. But look, I can just drop in my color. And I just spot all, all the color flats this way. And a good thing about it is you can make a mess. You can mess up a little. It doesn't matter because you can just go in and you can erase it all wherever you have issues. But this way, when you're doing it on the alpha channel, this is not, I'm not affecting the black lines at all. There's no black lines being affected. My art, I don't have to worry about my art because my art 
my art is down on this alpha channel over here. See here, if I turn this off, see how it's gone? So you're drawing underneath it. It's all safe. So you just stay in the RGBs and you do all your colors there. You could do them in CMYK too. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll convert over uh, to CMYK. Or if I'm doing color that I know is going to the printer um, for a certain type of print, I will just color in CMYK right away. And then I will I will do a black sat saturation and, and lock all the black ink in place so that it doesn't bleed. If you ever look at a comic book sometimes, um, the... Uh, the blacks look kind of brown on the comic book page. It's because the saturation of colors over top of the black ink, they've done so many passes that it's kind of washed out to a brown. Um, this way here, if you do this in, with the alpha channels, you can preserve the blacks really nice and tight, really clean. And I just do this all the way through it. You can actually just outline the whole thing if you want. You're not hurting it. You just go through. This is why colorists hire people to do flats, though, because if they're spending hours doing this, they're losing out on uh, time. But you just fill it all in. You can start seeing it all fill in, right? And then you start, oh, okay, I had a little pixel here, I had a pixel there, but it's clean, true pixels. It's not a, it's not a mixture, it's not dithered or, 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 or faded, it's a clean, sharp pixel. Here, let me do this so we can see, uh, we can sort of see what it looks like here with the, beside the brush and stuff. So I got this down here. Oh, I made a mistake, that's okay, just come over. And Clean it up. Go back to your brush. You just start filling in. Now the cool part is, we um, we can come over here and we can grab the orange off that other layer. And go back to our brush here and fill it in. And it's okay if I break the lines because these are clean pixels. So when I go back in with the gray, it's fine. It's gonna, I'll be able to, I'll be able to edit that really quickly. Or be able to correct that fast. And the other cool thing about having the alpha channel is that this black art, this black line art, if I choose to later, I can select this black line art and create a layer and paint it a darker orange and knock out the black ink completely so that there's no there's no black ink. It's just it's just a darker orange where that black is. If if that's you know you sometimes you see that especially in anime comics where there's no true black ink lines, there's just a darker color of the hair. If the hair is violet, it's a darker violet for the art lines. Um, and that's what makes the alpha channels a little bit easier than just doing layers because you can you can select them later and color right on top of them and knock them out if you want so there I've just I just grabbed it all and cleaned it up like that and then you just bucket it you know and then if you uh if you want to clean stuff up, just go in and clean those lines up. And so then you can start seeing how he looks, right? And it gives you an idea. And then you can do all the flats. You just flat. How much time we got? We got a little bit of time, so I'm gonna keep going. Um, but you can start doing all the flats and sort of break down your whole, the whole thing. And uh, once you're ready to color, it's all there. Normally what I do is once I have this color flat, I will then go in and do uh, the gray tones like you see me doing. 
normally I do the gray tones first before I come in here. So I, even though I'm showing you this example, we're gonna. This isn't gonna be the final product. I'm gonna go back out and sh do the color, the gray tones in there before I drop all this color. Um, and the reason I want to do that is because uh, the, he's gonna have along here. Oop, is that a brush? Yeah. Let's get rid of that. So there's gonna be a, a secondary light behind him of green here. So because of that. Um, this green back here like a green light source I don't want to do this yet because I've got to do our gray tones on them before we get to that but anyways that's how I do an alpha channel um, when we come back the next time I'll do a real we'll do the whole flats together and um, I'll get it all done for you um, and that'll be kind of cool right so uh, that's that's what we're gonna do next um, I really appreciate you all dropping in to watch us ink up our cool character carve here he is um i'm gonna drop in all the gray tones on my own i'll just drop them in and have it ready so the next episode will be me uh coloring we're gonna color this guy together as a team all of us hey what's up jeff um so here we are thank you so much for tuning in to watch us uh, get making a superhero part three for Carve Catan. Uh, he's looking cool. So uh, stay tuned. We got the. Oh hey, what's up, animal? <laughs> uh, pink toenails? No pink toenails. Maybe one. We'll do one pink for you. Uh, um, but uh, yeah. So we'll come back. We'll color him up on the next episode. We'll Photoshop the whole thing. We'll do some layers and highlights and tones. And uh, hopefully it'll look good as Lisa's. Uh, maybe, probably not. Uh, Rochelle and Lisa are amazing. I'm an amateur at best. Um, but we'll get all done and work through it. The basics are there for you to learn from, so you'll get to see them all. Oh, I'm sorry, animal. Uh, I will start trying to do it a little bit later. Um, we got a whole bunch more to go. We got eight superheroes to go. The next one is a female. Um... Oh, thanks, Tatey. You're so beautiful. Thank you. That's amazing. Um, and thanks for all the nice things you guys have been saying on on uh, all the channels. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Um, wow, listen to this. I feel like just painting some Celtic circles on me and going and fighting. Listen to this. Hey, it's Thor. What's up, Thor? Yeah, I just feel like getting in a fight. <laughs> Look at this. Um... All right, so thanks for tuning in for our second hero. And we'll see you guys all. My son's got to get ready for school, so I got to I got to I got to log off. Um, uh, be kind to each other, be nice to yourselves, treat yourselves as nice as you treat everyone else and uh, have a great day. Um, I really appreciate all this time I get to spend with you. Yeah, Thor is a big lurker, lurking. So, oh, before I go, now that some of the regulars are here, we're going to do a commission contest. Uh, I'm going to do a commissions contest. It's coming up for June. Um, the winner, the winner of the commissions contest will get to pick their own commission, uh, 11 by 17 image that um, I will draw on here and make a movie for you. We'll do a movie of it and I will edit and chop it all together so you have a video of your character coming together and then you'll have this cool character and video for you. Uh, and the winner will get that. You get to pick whatever you want in this commission. You can pick Doctor Who, Batman, Star Wars, Pokemon, whatever it is. Um, and we'll, Fortnite, you know, Call of Duty, whatever. The winner, it's up to you to pick. And we'll do that 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 whole uh, contest. That's coming up in June. Um, so uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Wait, tomorrow? I won't be on tomorrow because uh, my son's birthday and we're getting ready to hit. We'll be heading out early to drive out to the zoo. But I will be back on Wednesday. We'll will streams Wednesday, and that's when we'll do the color. And uh, I'll try and get on a little bit later. Um, that way we can have more people. Thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Um, and I hope you all join us for the contest um, and stuff like that. Have a great day, everybody. I really appreciated drawing this for you. I had I, It was my honor to do it, and I can't wait to do more for you. Um, cheers. Oh, he loves the seals. He'll see them. Bye, everyone.